Hey friends, we are back once again with another episode of Strip Club Talk. That is Jade. I am Danny. Hello, beautiful. Hello. We, uh, we've we been getting some really good uh, comments and, and compliments and things on this show uh, from some of the previous shows we've done. So uh, we're going to take some of those comments and we're going to answer some questions on this one. One of we're, What we're going to talk about today, a couple things. One is how you get out of your burnout. When you get burnt out, you just can't seem to uh, shake the funk. We're going to talk about uh, how dancers get out of that and also how DJs get out of that. And we're also, we had some comments about uh, OnlyFans and mm -hmm. kind of the difference between uh, doing OnlyFans uh, and webcamming versus doing live entertainment in a strip club. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about that as well. But let's go ahead and talk about this burnout thing because everybody gets it every job no matter what you go into oh, yeah. work you do the same thing it's almost like cookie cutter uh mm -hmm. you know you just feel like you're doing the same thing so as an entertainer how do you what do you do like if you're in the middle of a night and all of a sudden it's just not working for you you're just you're not into it how do you because some days you're into it some days you're not how do you mm -hmm. shake the funk as an entertainer um, so that just depends if like, just to answer the question, I guess, directly with the, per, the night in particular, if I'm having, like, I got into a rut during the middle of my night. Um, sometimes it could be, um, I'm tired. Sometimes I'm just the room. I feel like they're not vibing with me or what have you. So, um, sometimes I'll just take a minute, go backstage, look at my phone, distract myself from either the frustration of the night of me just feeling that burnout or I'll change my outfit. Sometimes it's those little things. Maybe, maybe I thought that that work at that outfit was going to work for me and maybe it's not even the outfit, but it, it changes your frame of mind. And even if it's not that it, I don't know what it does, but it literally can sometimes change your entire mood. Um, and then as soon as you change, you go out on the floor and you sell, you know, five dances. Mm -hmm. That's um, funny. A little reference to baseball, you know, I'm a Cincinnati guy and Cincinnati Reds fan. And about a week or two ago, we have a pitcher named Sonny Gray, starting pitcher. He went out and had a horrible first inning. Mm -hmm. And the running joke was in between innings, he ran back, changed everything except his underwear <laughs> and came back out. And yeah. everybody, you know, and all of a sudden he had a great rest of the game so uh so i guess really in in so many different things all you got to do is change your inside yeah. mentality does that make is that what you're thinking yeah, that's you're exactly right yeah well that's really even, really go ahead oh that's I, so that's really a cool thing man just kind of yeah. change everything as a dj um you know we can't really change clothes or anything like that but as a dj we do we get into ruts all the time where we start you know we're just not into it the crowd's not into it they're not listening so what i try to do is i change um i try to change what i say and how i say it and i try to change my inflection uh, we get into habits where you turn on the microphone and you say, okay, you know, Jade up here for one more, or Jade up here for two more, or, you know, stop up and tip her all the different things that we always say. And uh, what I, one of my tricks is changing my inflection uh, or changing the pitch that I start my words on. Okay. And if I can give you an example of that, um, you can almost be saying the same thing, but it comes across different. If you just say, okay, we've got Jade up here for two more. That's one way to say, and you can say the exact same thing and say, okay, we have Jade up here for one more. Mm -hmm. You know, just changing the inflection and changing the notes that you start on, it's different for you. It's also different for the customers because they mm -hmm. hear something different. Um, sometimes, you know, we don't really get the ability to walk away, but if you do, you know, like you were saying, you just go backstage for a second. You know, right. I, I pop up sometimes, Joe and I, the other DJ, um, I'll pop up on my off night and I'll just give him a little break where he can walk away for about 10 minutes and yeah. he comes back and he's just a whole new person. That's hard to do in the DJ booth uh, because yeah. you do have to stay focused. You can't really take your mind off of things. But right. yeah, just finding something new uh, to think about, to say, uh, wording things differently. Um, oh, yeah. Going through your music and saying, you know, getting yourself into a little thing of what haven't I played in a while and let's play this. You know, that mm -hmm. way you're not going in uh, doing the same thing. I, if you remember the old I Love, I'm going to really date myself here. If the old I Love Lucy show where she's yeah. on an assembly line and she's got the chocolates, 
and all you do all day is put the chocolate in the wrapper and foil the wrapper and move on. Uh -huh. It's kind of that way with DJs. All we really do is assembly line, you know, load a song, start the song, talk about the girl, load a mm -hmm. song, talk about the girl, you know, and it's just, that's the right. same thing. So you got to find a way to not let it get assembly line. Gotcha. And, and just bring something fresh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes so. a lot of sense. And, you know, I think, honestly, I don't think about it a lot until just now we're talking about it. Um, but sometimes I feel like you guys can also change my mood. Like if a lot of times you you get I don't know if a lot of girls agree with me, but I feel like I've had the same conversation and, and I would like to say they do. Sometimes if you get there and you don't get to go on stage right away, it kind of puts you in a mild funk because that's what kind of starts your night and gets you moving. Um, and then you can kind of gauge the audience and see who's into you, who's not, um, and what everybody's doing around you. Um, so if you get there and you haven't gone on stage and it's been almost an hour, you're kind of like walking around the room as a girl that like nobody hasn't been introduced to yet. So sometimes when I finally get my chance to go up there and even in, like you said, it's the way that you say things. So like, I'll be having like a funky night and then I finally get to go on stage and I hear you say, and the beautiful Miss Jade and it's how you say it. And then I'm like, you're right. I am beautiful. <laughs> I'm just like completely changes my whole mood. Mm -hmm. So are you the type of entertainer? Who, yeah, I'm assuming that you like to go on as soon as you get there, because there are some entertainers that say, I'm, I need to, I need a drink or two before I can go on stage. <laughs> um, no, I, I prefer as soon, as soon as I get there. Um, like when I go up to the house, mom desk and they ask me, um, well, they never used to, but lately I feel like they've been asking, well, where do you want to, where do you want to go in line? I'm like, I don't care who I follow the sooner, the better. Mm -hmm. Um, cause for me, I don't really feel like I need, I've never felt like I needed to have a drink to kind of get in my zone. Um, so I think the attention on stage is what gives me that juice to like kickstart my night. Okay. And we're going to go on to our second subject um, in, in just a second on the OnlyFans. But I, I want to stop uh, just right here and just say, you know, what are some of the things that you guys that are listening and uh, and watching this show? We mm -hmm. this is how we get our topics and this is how we learn, because we're not really here just to just to share our experiences. We're here to learn as well. So we learn by yes. your comments. So uh, let me know what you guys do to get out of your funk and, and stuff like that. Now, we want to talk. Yeah, put those in the comments. Yeah. I like how you do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it looks better when you do it. You've got those. Okay. <laughs> Shut up, Danny. Here we go. Um, a lot of people compare OnlyFans and um, and webcamming and live entertainment. When I say live entertainment, I mean I mean strip club um, entertainment. Um, and it, I guess, on the outside, it seems to be a lot the same thing. But there are so many differences between them. Um, I, you know, people that, that do only fans, you know, it's, it's kind of nice cause you can sit behind your computer and, you know, work for a little bit and then, you know, go away. And, and then all of a sudden you go into a, uh, a strip club environment and people are in front of you and you're, you're live and you see them and right. they see you. Um, so what really are the real differences? Because you do only fans and you also, of course, are a live entertainer. So right. what, are, what, are, what are the differences and uh, what are the things you really have to look at to do both? Um, so for me, I might not have the same perspective as, you know, some people who maybe started online first versus being in person. Um, I've danced for obviously much longer than I started the whole OnlyFans thing. And, um, the, but the differences are, I believe is, you know, online, like you said, you can step away from your computer, you can upload your content and walk away. Um, and then obviously whenever you decide to respond to messages, you can do that, or you can decide to ignore messages versus when you're at the club and you're in person, you know, you're communicating, you're making eye contact, you're this close to somebody. Um, so the conversation sometimes the communication is a little bit different. I think sometimes, um, especially like with, you know, during quarantine, I feel like a lot of girls started like the whole online content, um, like the OnlyFans and all that. And then they're like, well, I'm doing really well at this. I could totally be a dancer. And I just always wondered how um, that would, you know, you would transition into that role because you think, oh, it's so easy. I just upload this content and they, you know, they bite and they love it um, versus 
actually, oh shit, now I'm in person communicating with these people. And now I don't know what to say. Like, I always wondered how that would be. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what's your take on it. Um, I don't really know. Cause obviously I don't do only fans. I... Right. <laughs> but I'm sure you've known many people who've done one or the other. Um, as far as the differences go, I know a lot of people that do only fans. Um, and the biggest thing that they all tell me is the exact same thing. It's not just taking pictures and posting them. Mm -hmm. It's almost a full-time job. Yeah. Um, you know, it's easy, I guess, to get your first set on only fans because you have people that have never seen you naked and your friends mm -hmm. find out you're on only fans and they want to see your boobs. Right. So <laughs> it's easy to get people to sign up for a month. Now, the trick right. is to get people to do that recurring thing every month. And that is, you know, you almost need a photographer or a good, good selfie stick or something like that, mm -hmm. um, you know, to just constantly upload new stuff. And you have to constantly uh, engage back and forth um, because, you know, you, there's you and mm -hmm. there's a million other. I don't know how many people are on it. Oh, my gosh. Fans, yeah. But there's it seems like every every Instagram friend I get. First thing they do is they send me their OnlyFans. So, yeah. oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, well, and it's hard when people don't them? know you too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's easy to have a returning subscriber if somebody gets to know you and you build that uh, rapport. But if the difference, I guess, is it's a little easier to do that when you're at the club because you're actually communicating with them in person. They feel like they're getting to know you versus online. If you're just uploading things, you're not taking your time to really connect. Mm -hmm. um, you're right. Like what gives them that incentive to keep resubscribing versus when they keep coming back to the club, they know you, they're getting your undivided attention. I got you. Now here's a question. Uh, you work different clubs, different markets. You've been um, out in Vegas and, and Miami and Dayton, Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, and you talk to a lot of other entertainers. Are there any clubs out there that say, if you are going to work here, you cannot have an only fans uh, where they try to keep them separate. Um, I know that was something big before OnlyFans got big, but you know, they were always worried about escorting um, right. and, and, you know, prostitution. And are you using the, you know, your OnlyFans to try to draw in the live person and then work deals out? Um, and I, 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 so my question to you is, do you know of any clubs that have actually tried to separate those two and put rules against it? Um, no, actually, I don't. I've that's literally you saying that as the first time I've ever been introduced to that, to that idea. I know back in the day there was a whole like, you know, if you're working at our club, we don't want you working at other clubs. I mm -hmm. knew that that was sort of a thing, um, but I've not actually heard of the whole like, if you're working here, I don't want you to do OnlyFans um, type situation yet. Um, I guess I could understand that, especially like you said, when you're dealing with the whole prostitution situation, um, that's clearly could be an avenue for promoting that side of yourself if that's something that you're doing. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't heard anything about that. I was just curious because I know uh, mm -hmm. there's a lot of escort pages. Um, oh, I've right. heard that there's a lot of escort pages right. on the internet, <laughs> not that I've physically gone there. But, uh, right. you know, I, I have seen, um, you know, people say, hey, you know, you know, if you want to hook up with me, come to my club and I work at this club and that club. That's I mean, right. those are the complete absolute don't even try. Mm -hmm. I think OnlyFans keeps your identity a lot more private. Um, nobody really yes. knows what city you're from unless you've come right out and said it. So mm -hmm. so I guess I guess there'd be a big difference and a safer difference between between that. So yeah. okay, I, I was just kind of curious if you'd ever heard of any clubs stopping that so no i haven't uh, i don't see a problem with it um and again you know it is something to always check with your club because the last thing you want to do is get fired exactly. uh and especially in this stage day and age of uh, of social media because if you get fired from a strip club um in this day and age managers talk owners talk. oh yeah to other owners, managers mm -hmm. talk to other managers and, you know, they'll say, Hey, we just fired this girl for, for hooking her prostitution or drugs or something mm -hmm. like this. The word so then, spreads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the word spreads more now than it ever did. So try your best not to ever get fired from a strip club because it's, it's hard to find work. Once you do, you almost oh, have to very. go to a whole new market. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and again, what do you think uh, to the viewers out there? Um, have you ever heard of any clubs stopping that? Um, have you ever made the transition from 
from camming or from, uh, you know, OnlyFans over to live entertainment. And mm -hmm. what do you think's the hardest? Is it, I, and I'll ask you this real quick before we sign off. Do you think it's harder to go from being an entertainer in a strip club to going to OnlyFans? Or do you think it's harder to make the transition if you start from OnlyFans and go to a, an entertainer? Oh, that's such a good question. I would almost feel like it might be equal because for me, it's very difficult to go online because I'm so used to being in person. So it's very hard for me to learn how to connect through typing um, mm -hmm. versus, you know, somebody that's been doing only online might be, they might be more comfortable with that. So it might be more difficult now to be talking to people in person. So Good. I don't know. I would like to almost have that conversation with someone who started yeah. on the other end and then now has transitioned. Well, you know, I've had some uh, some comments about people. Why don't you bring on some other entertainers as well? Bring in a third or a fourth person, and we can obviously do that. So uh, I'm open. maybe mm -hmm. we'll, uh, yeah, we're open to uh, to that. So let's um, let's maybe do that next week. We'll bring some other people yeah. on, maybe some other DJs, some other uh, some other entertainers. Um, yeah. I've got a lot of porn star friends that uh, have tremendous. Uh, uh, social media following. So let, let's um let's look into that. So you guys uh, follow Jade, follow me. We're right there on YouTube. We release these shows every Friday by 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, follow us, leave comments, because that's how we know what you yes. guys want to hear. Jade, I appreciate it. I learned so much when I talk to you. I do. Yes, you too, Danny. I really okay. do. We'll catch you guys next week. See ya.